Hello there, friends and followers, and welcome back to the channel. In this X-Plane 12 video, we are going to be taking a look at X-Plane 12's graphics settings. This is meant to be a guide to help you set up the simulator to the best of your system capability. Let's get started. For the purpose of this graphic settings guide for X-Plane 12, we have just landed the default Cessna 172 at Innsbruck Airport, runway 26. Please do note that I'm not using any third party or any scenery enhancement add-ons in this settings guide video. Everything that you see here is default X-Plane 12. You can access the graphic settings in X-Plane 12 from either the main menu or by hovering the mouse on the in-flight menu and selecting the settings icon. For the purpose of our first landing footage, I have set all graphic sliders to the maximum possible. Suffice it to say that these settings are not sustainable for every situation and aircraft. Let us begin with the texture quality setting. The texture quality controls the resolution of the cockpit textures and other objects in the world. It uses a lot of VRAM when at the maximum setting. If you have a GPU that is less than 12 GB of VRAM, I highly recommend that you push this either to the high or medium position. However, if you have a graphics card that has more than 12 GB of VRAM, feel free to push this all the way to the maximum. The Ambient Occlusion Quality SSAO is really an option that was introduced in X-Plane 11 but has very little effect on visual fidelity. As a matter of fact, the change from Ultra to None is almost non-existent. There is very little change in what you see in the rendered scene. We're going to take a look at an example here. We are now looking at the rendered scene with ambient occlusion set to the ultra setting. I have enabled the FPS counter right here, and I'd like to direct your attention to the area underneath the aircraft, specifically the area right here, and on the edges around the blade, and where the pole connects with the aircraft and the aircraft landing gear. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn off ambient occlusion completely to the non-position and take a look at the effect of both the visual fidelity as well as FPS. We have now turned off ambient occlusion. Looking at the FPS, it is unaffected. However, we lost a little bit of visual fidelity. As you can see the area here and on the edges of the blades as well as the landing gear. My recommendations as far as ambient occlusion is concerned, if you are experiencing FPS issues, by all means turn it off, as the difference in visual fidelity is extremely minimal. My recommendation to Lemonar Research is that this slider doesn't make much sense as a slider, as the difference between the ultra, high, medium, and low, and none, is really very minimal. My recommendation is that this is changed to either an on or off button. The rendering resolution FSR super sampling setting is really intended for higher resolution displays. If you are using a monitor with less than 4K display, I highly recommend that you keep this off and render the scene at full resolution. Changing FSR super sampling to any setting other than the off setting will cause image quality deterioration on lower resolution monitors. The anti-aliasing setting controls the object edge smoothness of your aircraft and many other objects in the sim. Obviously, this is a GPU dependent setting and setting it to 8x MSAA will definitely tax performance. Moving this slider down to 4x MSAA or 2x MSAA will definitely improve performance at the expense of introducing jagged lines. It might also introduce shimmering on some machines. I have found that the best setting for the RTX 3090 is between 2x MSAA and 4x MSAA. You might want to explore with this setting for the best performance versus visual fidelity. Anisotropic filtering is another anti-aliasing option. 
Basically, it is GPU dependent and it sharpens the runways and flat surfaces. It does not really have a lot of effect on performance and most graphic cards will benefit from having this at 16x without any degradation in performance. The cloud quality settings has three positions, maximum, medium, and low. When setting the slider to the low position, as you can see, the scene looks extremely disturbing and it is totally unflyable and unacceptable as a setting. And moving this to the medium position is also not acceptable in my view, as you can see here. Again, you can see all the uh, shimmering there and the pixelation of the clouds, which does not look very good. Now, the only setting that is acceptable and usable in the sim is the maximum setting. As you can see, this is the only setting where the scene is smooth. I'm not sure why Laminar has introduced the medium and low settings when they are totally unusable. However, for the purpose of having a pleasant experience in the sim, it is my recommendation that you keep this at the maximum settings at all cost and lower other sliders if you are having performance issues. Let us now take a look at the shadow quality setting. It is largely CPU dependent. And as you can see at the maximum settings, you get no jagged lines and the shadows look very nice. And uh, as you can see here, as we move the time, the shadows remain very sharp and very realistic. But let's see how much is this affecting our FPS. As you can see, we are getting about 45, 46 FPS in this particular setup. So we're gonna change the shadow quality from maximum to high. Now we can see that uh, with moving the time that the shadow quality still looks pretty good and our FPS has increased just a little bit to about 45, 46 FPS. It still looks good. The edges are still pretty sharp and it still looks very realistic. Now, we're going to move the slider to the medium setting. You can see that with the medium setting, we are now getting a little bit of jagged lines, and the but it still looks pretty good, and the FPS is steady at about 46, 47 FPS, so not much difference in terms of performance or visual fidelity uh, between the medium and high. Now, let's take a look at the low settings. And the low settings, you can immediately see that there is definitely a change in the visual fidelity. And you can see the jagged lines of the shadows here. And this does not look very good. It still is, it still is acceptable, but it just really ruins the experience in my view. You can see all the jagged lines here, down here, and up here. And this does not look very good. And in terms of performance, we have gained somewhere between 2 to 3 FPS with this setting. Turning off shadow quality, aircraft only. Setting the shadow quality setting to aircraft only will disable all shadows of all the objects in the world except for those being casted on the aircraft and that the aircraft casts on the ground. As you can see, we have gained a little bit of performance here and the visually, actually, this is very pleasing. As you can see, the, uh, the quality of the shadows are very good inside the aircraft but nothing else has shadows. Let's take a look at the outside. And as you can see, the aircraft is casting the shadow on the ground. However, no other object will cast shadows in this case. Let me turn the option back on again, and I'm gonna put it again on the maximum setting so that you can see the difference. With the shadow setting set to maximum, we can see that the light pole is now casting shadows. The buildings are casting shadows as well as the con here is also casting shadow. My recommendation for shadow quality for most of you guys out there is to set it on medium. This is probably the best balance between visual fidelity and performance. The rendering distance is really the draw distance. How far will objects be drawn in the scene ahead of you? Obviously, the, um, the higher the setting, the lower the performance. And what I've noticed is that rendering distance and anti-aliasing are the two settings that are most demanding of your computer resources. Putting this on maximum in every situation will definitely degrade performance. Now, with this setting, I have noticed that you will gain a lot of FPS, anywhere between 5 to 10 FPS, moving it to the high position. 
What changes in terms of visual fidelity is very little. Let's take a look. We are now here at Innsbruck. We have all settings set to maximum quality and we're clocking about 40 FPS or so. Let's go ahead and change the draw distance from maximum to high. As you can see now, after changing the uh, draw distance, we are now getting up to about 46, 47 frames. The frames do fluctuate a lot in X-Plane 12, but you can see that we are now getting about 46 uh, maximum as opposed to 41 maximum in the maximum set draw distance setting. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to medium. As you can see with the medium setting, we are not getting as much objects drawn ahead of us. We can see that everything ends at about this point here, which isn't a problem in my view. And we can see that we have a considerable jump in performance uh, to about 48, uh, 50 frames, 48, about 48 frames. So again, significant improvement from um, about eight frames from the high setting, maximum setting, all the way to the uh, medium setting. Now setting this any lower than uh, the medium will actually not look very good. Uh, so if we take this to low and say, okay, let's take a look at what happens to the scene. As you can see with the draw distance set to low, we're getting absolutely nothing beyond this point here. And the scene does not look very good. It still looks okay for the immediate area here, and we do gain a little bit of FPS, but the overall scene does not look very convincing uh, from, uh, from with, with this setting uh, being at low. The perfect balance for the rendering distance setting between visual quality and uh, performance is really to put this on high. And I've noticed that this setting is the best setting for my machine. You might want to take this a notch down to medium if you are having performance issues, but mainly on high, you should be fine and you should not really have any uh, major degradation in performance uh, or uh, deterioration of the uh, uh, image quality. The world object density is probably one of the very few settings that uh, affects CPU to a great extent. And basically what this does, it's the number of buildings, roads, and cars in the world. Setting this obviously to the maximum on my machine has no effect on performance. As we can see, we are having now 40 FPS. I'm gonna move this to the high position and we're gonna take a look at the performance. As you can see with the world object density slider set to high from maximum, we are still getting decent amount of buildings and uh, objects here in the sim and the performance hasn't really, we haven't really gained much. Now, if we move this, of course, this is again a CPU dependent and I am clocking right now at five gigahertz. So uh, we can move this back now to medium and let's take a look. Moving the roll density slider from high to medium has definitely given a few FPS, not much though, probably two or three, and we can still see the objects. Now, by the way, the vegetation is controlled by another setting, but the, the buildings, we can still see the houses here and around the area here. It's not as visually appealing uh, when the slider is set to maximum, but it's still acceptable. My recommendation for the world object density setting is to set it between medium and high for uh, medium end machines and to set it to the maximum for high end machines. The vegetation density is a slider that is GPU dependent and uses a lot of VRAM. Now, one thing to say about this slider is when you move this slider to, let's say high or medium, the overall generation of trees will be reduced significantly. Let's take a look. All right, as you can see, the number of trees has now significantly reduced in this area. We don't see as much. By the way, it's not just the trees, but it's all the shrubs, the trees, and anything to do with vegetation in the sim will be reduced. We can see the reduction of it here. And I'm gonna go ahead, and by the way, the performance isn't really affected that much, uh, at least on my machine. Moving the slider to medium, there is definitely a lot less vegetation generated in the scene. Now, this is still acceptable in my view, and it would still look good, 
Um, however, it looks a lot better with the vegetation slider set to maximum. My recommendations for the vegetation density slider is that if you have a capable GPU, you will benefit a lot in terms of visual fidelity by keeping this on maximum. However, if you are having performance issues, you can take this down all the way to medium without really affecting the visual fidelity too much. Let me now give you my recommendations for high, medium, and low-end machines based on extensive testing that I have done in the sim. In terms of texture quality, you can keep this at maximum as long as you have a capable GPU that has more than 12 GB of VRAM. Ambient Occlusion Quality SSAO, keep it on Ultra. Rendering Resolution FSR Super Sampling, keep this off unless you have a 4K display. In that case, you can move this to Ultra. Anti-aliasing, set this to 2x MSAA. Antistropic filtering can stay at 16 times. Cloud quality at maximum, shadow quality maximum, rendering distance to high, world object density to high, and vegetation density to maximum. On a high-end machine, those settings will give you the maximum visual fidelity and performance. For medium-end machines, I recommend the following settings. Texture quality to high. Ambient occlusion quality is off. Rendering resolution FSR super sampling is off full resolution unless you are on a 4K display. I recommend moving this to ultra. Anti-aliasing 2x MSAA. Anistropic filtering 16x. Cloud quality maximum. Shadow quality on high. Rendering distance on medium. World object density on high. Vegetation density on maximum. For low end machines, I recommend the following settings. Texture quality on high or medium. Ambient occlusion quality SSAO turned off. Rendering resolution FSR super sampling is off full resolution. Anti-aliasing 2x MSAA. If you're having issues, you can move this to FXAA. However, I recommend that you keep this on 2X MSAA and turn on FXAA from the NVIDIA control panel. Anistropic filtering 16 times. Cloud quality, maximum. Shadow quality, aircraft only. Rendering distance, medium. World object density, medium. Vegetation density, medium. Those settings will provide you with the best visual fidelity and performance on a low-end machine. Well folks, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of the complete settings guide for X-Plane 12. I hope that you found this video to be useful, informative, and insightful. If you have any questions, as usual, please do post them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell button so that you're notified of the latest tutorials, guides, and live streams here on the QA Pilot channel. Until next time, please. Do take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.